105.3 The Fan YouTube. Kevin Gray alongside the super producer of the K and C masterpiece. That's Reginald, a lot of credit. <laughs> Reginald, <laughs> Reginald Atatula joining me as the Cowboys fall 24 to 19 to the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, with the Cowboys loss on Sunday. They currently now own the number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft. If the Take that tankathon. <laughs> All right. To, to end today. Um, Garrett Gilbert, 21 of 38 for 243 and a touchdown. Got sacked a couple times. Had a chance to try and win the game in the end. Came up short. Reggie, your overall thoughts of Cowboys Steelers week nine as they get ready to enter into their bye week. Oh man, there, there's there's so much there. It's it was a rich game, um, which I imagine is really fun for us as we get to talk about these things, um, and for I guess the fans, especially coming from where you came from a couple weeks back, where you got to a point where it was feeling like apathy because you knew what it was going to be and it wasn't going to be nothing good. I think last week kind of portended some of this. So last week against Philadelphia gave you a little bit of feeling like, all right, cool. They, they can throw some things up on the board to see if they can make some things happen. And I was talking to some homies during the game, and I said at one point, okay, now you're seeing the Cowboys become an NFL franchise. Like, this is an NFL team. What we were seeing previously with uh, the, the crazy mixture of injuries mm -hmm. and poor effort and seemingly not having some dudes in the right place, this was not an NFL team. Right. There was points where you were looking at them like, y'all, y'all can't do the very, very most basics of what's happening. You're talking about, you know, trying to dumb down defenses and offenses to see if you can make it work. That was an issue. But today in this game, you started seeing some of the bases for the optimism coming into the season. Right. The discussions that you had was defensively, there's a possibility for you to be average. Now, very small sample size defensively. Look like a fairly average, maybe a slightly above average defense, mm -hmm. right? You got that there for a few, uh, a, a few reasons. Offensively, this is an offense that we thought with the weapons that you had, had the possibility to go out and really put the numbers up on folks. Now, of course, you don't have the engine of that being a star quarterback, but you put in there a quarterback who was, let's say, serviceable. Yeah. You, you saw Competent some, you saw some things minimum. happen. Competent. Right. There you go. Yeah. You saw some things happen. So I, I think that this was interesting in seeing that. And I, it makes me wonder how much uh, how much we really should be continuing to bang on the head coach and the coaching staff. Uh, it makes me wonder a lot of things. But, of course, the standouts that you got to mention, Randy Gregory looked good, man. Mm -hmm. Randy, Randy Gregory, Gregory looked turning the corner really a little bit. Um, and I guess maybe I talk about Randy Gregory as a standout, and there's that. But I think the biggest defensive plus that you saw, Neville Gallimore up the middle. And I'm not sure if it was entirely Neville Gallimore because I am not necessarily the person who is constantly keeping an eye on the line play, like noting it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't have noticed if maybe somebody else got involved in the action. But it seemed like Neville Gallimore's name was the name that we were calling a lot. And for the simple fact of that was a defensive tackle that was standing folks up on the run and pushing the pocket on the pass. Mm -hmm. And that did a lot for this defense. Of course, there was a slightly different, de different defensive set. I think uh, Tony Romo on the TV broadcast was talking <laughs> yes. about the bear. The, the bear 46 front. defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I'm not going to be the one to tell you exactly what that, what that meant for the defense. But what I can tell you is if you have somebody up the middle who's not doing nothing, it's not going to work. And when you do have somebody up the middle that's doing something, it makes the jobs easier for everybody else. So defensively, that's the stand now. And offensively, I guess, where, where do we want to start a stand now? I mean, I guess you got to give the, give the flowers to the quarterback who came in and was admirable in, in a place where you saw – how many three, four other dudes? I wouldn't say mm -hmm. four because you other fourth is Dak Prescott. Or no, three other two other dudes because Dak Prescott and then you had Andy Dalton and you had Ben DiNucci. Yeah. Not really looked that great. And of course, understanding the circumstances, but he came out. Um, he was solid. He he did not seem to be too uh concerned under pressure, which Pittsburgh's gonna give you. And of course, the pressure was a little bit better because the blocking was a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the big things, because someone asked me during the game, they went do you think that you go back to Andy Dalton when he's ready to go? I don't know. Right. <laughs> that, absolutely. And my answer was, I don't think so. And it's not, it's not a Garrett Gilbert is way better than Andy Dalton thing. 
but it's kind of a realization of what the quarterback position is in the NFL right now. And in order to play the quarterback position fairly well in the NFL, some mobility matters. Mm -hmm. And you look at Andy Dalton behind, particularly this offensive line as it's constructed and you've done a lot of uh, filling cracks and putting gum in places and duct tape in here and there. (laughs) Having a dude who is not particularly mobile is not what you want back there. What's the, what's the difference in being able to recognize on the field and being able to make the throws between Dalton and Garrett Gilbert? I think that remains to be seen. But what you can say is Garrett Gilbert, in an instance where he needs to get his le- use his legs to make something happen or to just pick up yards, yep. he's capable of doing that. And I think that matters. And that's going to be something that's going to be worthwhile to help Kellen Moore uh, continue to push forward with this offense. And yeah. also, you can speak to the fact that it, it's a little bit more closer to the to a, a facsimile of what your starting quarterback typically is, and that can help you build around the profile of what you're normally having there as opposed to building an offense that starts to veer in the direction uh, of a guy who's a statue more like Andy mm-hmm. Dalton rather than the moving quarterback that you have in Dak Prescott. Yeah, you saw at one point Garrett Gilbert had more rushing yards than Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> like he had a couple of carries for 26 yards on a drive where he scrambled for 10 after getting a 16 yard play after, you know, uh, the field kind of opened up for him. And I think Garrett Gilbert's physicality at the position, to your point, is much better in this offense because his ability to escape, his ability to make some throws down the field. I thought the 32 yard pass to Amari Cooper during the first drive was one of those throws to kind of settle him down a little bit. Say, okay, he can go ahead and handle this thing. And at minimum, this offense looked competent versus what we saw last week against the Philadelphia Eagles, which is a far cry from what we've seen without Dak Prescott so far, you know, this season. So I thought Gilbert did a nice job handling it. You, you could tell as things got tight, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers started to bring that pressure. Cam Hayward was whooping Connor Williams all day long. That's Oof. something. <laughs> when they go back and watch the tape this week, Connor Williams was getting beat. And, and I don't know, and I know Cam Hayward is one of the best interior linemen in football. Right. But Absolutely. my goodness, Connor Williams was was no match for Cam Hayward throughout the entire day. Well, one thing you can say is that I and you know what? I probably shouldn't say it because somebody's going to come up and pull the video on me. But it did not seem like – Connor Williams was getting beat, yes, but it did not seem like he was getting torched, if that mm-hmm. is, if I can make a distinction. He wasn't Chad Green out here, but he was getting beat. <laughs> yeah, like he was getting pushed back, and uh-huh. Garrett Gilbert had to manage uh, the pocket a little bit more. But it wasn't like there was a black and yellow jersey necessarily in um, Garrett Gilbert's face because – Connor Williams was getting beaten. That's kind of what you expected. You know, Connor Williams isn't a Pro Bowl guard at this point in time. You just need something to hold up. And going back to the image that we painted earlier, this is very much a uh, shoddy tape job. You know, you're, you're putting things together. So I think that you've done, he, he did about what you could ask from him, which is give the dude behind him time to try and get some of these throws off. Of course, you weren't able to get off some of the throws that you would like were, you know, a challenging deep down the field at times. Uh, there was the opportunity, I think, to Michael Gallup where the ball had to get out just a, a hair faster than you really wanted it to. So those type of things. But I think those are the things that you understand that you're dealing with when you're dealing with all the injuries that you have and when you're dealing with the backups, you know. What did you think about the fourth down call, specifically where the Cowboys had fourth and inches? Uh, I believe it was 16 to 9 at the time. And – McCarthy is set, so they're contemplating either getting a 39 yard field goal or going for it on fourth and inches and McCarthy decides to kick the field goal to go up night to basically go up two scores at that point I thought they should have went for it I thought this was a point especially I thought the momentum there's there's the word we like to use the the quote-unquote momentum <laughs> of the game was at the point where this is an opportunity for you to put the confidence in your offense you had just gotten a really nice run from Ezekiel Elliott on the previous play to get you in position for the fourth and inches. Why not go ahead, use Ezekiel Elliott or Tony Pollard in that situation, keep the football and continue to put the pressure on the Steelers and the defense at that time. Cause I felt like they were doing a nice job, but they decided to kick the field goal. What did you think of that call at that point juncture of the game? I absolutely understand where you're coming from. Um, I, 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 I'm kind of split, right? Because there, and this is not going to go over well, particularly with like one Brian Broaddus who would, who would absolutely be yelling, get off the fence. Um, but 
I get the idea of go for it on fourth and one. It puts confidence in your offense. And this is really what this, the season is about largely, I think, is development and trying to build up a team and truly, you know, have them all buy into the coaching staff and the leadership and what the direction is. So I, I get the idea of go for it on fourth and one. Empower your offense. And you've seen the way the defense have been playing to that point in the game where it seemed like they were holding their own and they were capable of making stops. So if you were not able to get it, you know, it kind of tells your defense also, we know that you guys can get the job done if we can't do it here and get us the ball back. At the same time, I also look at where this dude has to be sitting at, where you look at the paper of what you've got, which is all of the, the, you know, all the injury issues, which we talked about, the offensive line that was just barely coming into form, Uh, you know, a dude who had not started for you, and I don't believe he had started at all at quarterback, You've got a defense that had been looking good, as I mentioned, but also if that's the smaller sample size. What's the larger sample size of this defense? Right. Not pretty. I understand where you take all of that information and in and you look at it and you go, let's take this three points. We're playing against a team also that is not shy of putting up numbers, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers are capable of going big and mm-hmm. putting up a whole bunch of numbers. So you were, you were happening to hold them – pretty well but when you get an opportunity to put up numbers or put up points I understand how you get to that place where you put up points I like you would have liked for them to go for go for it on fourth down particularly because winning this individual game did not matter nearly as much as we would like to think in the grand scheme even if you think that you're still going for it to try and win it I think we all agree that with the state of the NFC East you can win this division in this division. Play well <laughs> against the teams that you're playing in the division, and you can win the division. You know, yeah. the the game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, I doubt matters that much ultimately in the end game. So yeah, go for it on fourth would have been what I like to see, but I get why he goes for it there, or why he kicks the field goal there. Yeah, McCarthy saying post game that he was trying to win the football game, and he felt that putting more points on the board would go towards winning the football game. Which I mean. Okay, but at the yeah. same time, this isn't a game that you're supposed to win anyway. Why not? And I love to say this: scare money don't make money. Go ahead, talk to him. T- take the chance and see what you can do, and figure it out from there. But you know, I understand the logic. I just wish they would have showed a little more, a little more guts in that moment, uh, right. especially when the the analytics say in that in that particular position. I know folks will love that. Uh, this says go for it in that moment. But yeah, but just... we, we, we know that the Mike Mark, Mike McCarthy as <laughs> analyticist is a little bit, it's a little bit of a fraught notion, right. but this is the thing that I think is when we start getting to these ideas of go for it on instances and how it matters in the psyche of the players. I think that's all sell, right? Like that's just the way that you sell it. If you talk to him and Mike McCarthy goes into his players, it was like, we kick the field goal because we want to win. I think that you can make that work. You can make that go in the locker room in the same way that you can say we went for it on fourth down because we were trying to win the game. I think that works either way. So I, I, I imagine that to be sell. Outside of that, I think that if you were trying to build uh, for the future, going for it on fourth down probably was a little bit better. But, yeah. Yeah. Special teams I thought was fantastic today. <laughs> Rico Dowdle had a uh, 64-yard kickoff return. That was preceded by, so earlier, a 73-yard uh, punt play where Cedric Wilson catches the, the punt, turns and throws the ball to C.J. Goodwin. He takes it all the way up the sideline. You think he's about to score. They wind up getting a block in the back penalty, which I thought was a little bit of a weak sauce call, but that's just me personally. <laughs> that's just me. But the creativity and the ingenuity on special teams, plus Tyron Crawford blocked uh, an extra point. There was a missed field goal. Special teams showed up today. And I think for a team that has a lot of deficiencies in certain areas, you need those kinds of plays to keep you in ball games. And special teams, I thought, came through very well for the, t- the Cowboys today. Yeah, absolutely. You're very correct. And special teams, uh, on that point, two things. Um, one of them is special teams is large. It's, it's not necessarily about talent, per se. Of course, like in the extreme cases, Devin Hester's and those types of things, sure. Special teams is about effort. You got a whole bunch of second string, third string, maybe lower dudes, and it's always about putting those guys together, making sure that they all know what they're doing, one. And two, just giving effort. And I think that special teams going very well in this game was indicative of something that I think that we saw throughout the rest of this team in this game, which was the effort was there. 
Mm -hmm. They're just, they just all seem to really put in the effort. They knew that they could come in and win this game. And it seemed that they believed it, even though I don't necessarily love delving into the narrative peddling. That's what it felt like. It felt yeah. like they got out there and they were like, yo, we're just going to go out here and be, beat this dude or go out and outrun that dude or out hustle or however you want to term it. Because uh, getting up the middle and getting blocks, you know, Tyron Crawford getting up the middle and getting blocks. That's just like, I'm, that's want to, yeah. I want to get there. And I got there. <laughs> The second thing about special teams is it felt like for the, a lot of the season, there was a lot of bad luck, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when we get into these sports, we love talking about sports as if it's all a meritocracy and it all matters uh, based on what you do. Sometimes there's some luck involved, you know, and of course you, you make your own luck in some ways and sometimes, you know, not necessarily holding on to the ball in the right way or, you know, something bouncing one way or the, the other. But it seemed like they did not have the abundance of bad luck that they had seemed to be carrying for the first eight games of this season. They, they seemed to get things to work in their direction in addition to all, all of the effort that they put in. And, yeah, that's what you brought in John Fossil to do, be yeah. innovative and get your guys in places where maybe they can make plays. And knowing that you didn't have an amazing defense coming in, you wanted another side of the ball – to, you know, give you uh, opportunities to be good. And I think that that, can, that turned up the way that you wanted it with the special teams in this game. Yeah, I think as the Cowboys enter into their bye week, they will be off next week before they visit the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins. Um, this was a game where you can look at and you could take away, I think, points of, all right, I could work with this. It's one of those games where I, I could yep. work with this. If yep. you guys, uh, for the second week in a row, I saw effort. I saw want to. I saw desire on the defensive side of the football. I saw competence on the offensive side of the football. Look, Tony Pollard's got the juice. I, I know, look, I like Zeke, been a huge Zeke guy, but I think behind this offensive line, the way it's constructed, you need a guy that's going to hit the hole really quickly. And Zeke is more of a power guy. You got the lightning in Tony Pollard. I thought he did a nice job uh, on Sunday too. But overall, also, also, he's getting different looks. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, I think Katie Drummond mentioned this on Twitter. Uh, he's getting a different front look. And so the, the holes are a little bigger. And I mean, you can see that mm -hmm. he's hitting the hole quick though. Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, he does look like he has more bursts as he hits the hole, but the hole is bigger. It, you can tell that teams are loading up for Zeke still. Mm -hmm. um, and that's tough for him because it does not seem like he's making the same plays, but even he has some plays that he made. He in did. this game as well, which kind of gets you uh, thinking in the direction of, you know, the ball gets rolling. You get you get to places where the offense is moving and guys feel like they can make bigger plays. And sometimes, the, you know, the offensive line is just playing better and they can make bigger plays. So yeah. not to not to be, you know, not to try and cut down your point, because you're right. Tony Pollard was fantastic mm -hmm. in this contest. But I think also there's there's a there's a different reason as to why that is the case. Yeah, Zeke put out a heroic effort. I thought there was a lot of folks who thought he wasn't even going to play in Sunday's game due to hamstring injury. And um, he looked like a guy who is still working through some things, but at the same time, I loved his effort today. And I thought, you know, he, he did that. So the Cowboys fall to the Pittsburgh Steelers in a competitive football game, but a game that they ultimately lose 24 to 19 as a, enter into their bye week before they take on the Minnesota Vikings on the road. The Cowboys fall to two and seven. And as we mentioned earlier, currently hold the number three overall pick in the 2021's annual selection meeting, otherwise known as the NFL draft. So if you thought they lost today, they did, but they also kind of won in the grand scheme of all of this. The so, best kind of winning. <laughs> yes. Put a lot of effort in, but still ultimately lose. I guess that's kind of a win-win if you're a Cowboys fan. This is the super producer of the KNC Masterpiece. His name. You really don't keep calling me that, huh? That, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you can find Reginald Atatula on Twitter at Reg Atatula. Please flood his Twitter with follows, please. And from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. Reginald Atatula. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir.